Hey guys, Taylor here, and today I'm back with another Division 2 video. And today I'm going to go over six things that were brought up in yesterday's special report that I feel you lot should know about. Now, the special report is a live stream with a few of the devs, a few of the community managers, and they show off what they've been doing, go over some news from the Division and things like that. I would definitely recommend keeping an eye on the Division Games Twitter page, just in case you do want to catch the special report for yourselves. But before we do get into the video, I just want to let you all know we are hosting a Arex Gaming stream team giveaway this month and that's for the chance to win a Nintendo Switch. All you have to do is go to the link in the description and enter. With that being said, let's get straight into it. So first up, crafting. It was a big focal point in the Division 1 and we've not really heard too much about it in the Division 2, but on the stream yesterday it was confirmed and there's a few changes to go along with it. So in previous videos I spoke about weapon mods and how they're not lootable anymore. That's because you're going to be able to craft them and when you do craft a weapon mod it stays with you forever and you'll be able to use it on multiple weapons. So you're not going to have to have 6 or 7 of the same weapon mods and you're not going to have to switch it between weapons. I honestly think this is a great change and it's honestly going to make inventory management a whole lot easier. Another huge improvement to the crafting system is how blueprints work now. These are going to level with you so you're not going to have useful blueprints that you're going to have to scroll all the way through until you get to the blueprint you want or the one that's useful and on the same level as you. If you buy a blueprint at the start of the game it's not going to be redundant after a couple of levels. It's going to level up with you and you can still be crafting from that same blueprint when you reach the end game. Staying on a similar topic, it sounds like you're going to be able to upgrade your gear as well. Now, I'm not too sure how this works, but by the sounds of it, if you get a nice chest piece at, say, level 10, it sounds like you're going to be able to continuously upgrade that and carry that throughout the game with you. That's what it sounds like anyway. I'm not 100% sure on this one, so do take it with a pinch of salt. And of course, everything you pick up whilst playing The Division 2 is going to be useful because you can deconstruct that and gain resources from it to then use to craft your new and better gear. Now moving on to something that was introduced into the Division 1 in update 1.8 and it's going to be making a return in the Division 2 and that is the recalibration station. Now in the stream they didn't go into too much detail but I'm pretty confident that it is going to act similarly to the one we've already had hands on with in the Division 1 and that means you're going to be able to re-roll some stats, change the major and minor attributes on your gear just to get that little bit more out of it. But as well as that, you're also going to be able to take a stat from, let's say, a backpack and transfer it to another backpack of your choice. So you don't have to keep on rolling until you get what you want. You can just take that one stat you liked off the previous backpack and transfer it to the one you're currently wearing. Now talking about gear and backpacks and things like that, they also showed off a very tiny glimpse of gear sets in the Division 2. So gear sets are going to work differently to brand sets in the Division 2. Brand sets are three bits of gear that you can combine together to get better bonuses, whereas gear sets are going to be more than three. Again, they only showed a small glimpse and it was a placeholder, so we're going to have to wait and see until we find out more about gear sets. Now open world activities. We knew we were going to get them, but we didn't know what exactly they were going to be. Now we have a few more details. The four they mentioned on the stream are as follows. We have public executions. You pretty much need to get there in enough time to stop these from happening. A hostage situation. Pretty self-explanatory. You're going to need to free a hostage from a certain faction. The faction and area will obviously be random each time. Faction propaganda. You're going to need to take back a big propaganda speaker from the faction and a control point. Once you take back control of this control point it's going to unlock a room with a big loot stash inside it so that's going to definitely be one to keep on the radar as well as that they also mentioned something called bounties and the return of open world bosses but they also stress that they're going to be different than the ones we saw in the division one so in short once we've completed the campaign and done all of the side missions it still sounds like we're going to have a whole lot to do to keep us busy Sticking on the topic of missions and the campaign, if you bring a friend on that's brand new to the game, let's say you're level 20, they will scale up to your level and get rewards for their own level. It's a little bit confusing, but think of it like this. If you're level 20 and they're level 7, they will be leveled up to 20, but all their rewards and XP will still scale with level 7, so when they play on their own, they won't have skipped anything and they'll have loot for their own level. That's how it's described. I'm guessing this is something we're going to be able to try out in the beta, just on a smaller scale. Now, last but not least, something the hardcore community have been asking for for the Division 1 for a very long time, and that is photo mode. Well, finally, we're going to be getting one in the Division 2. 
This doesn't really need explaining much, it's just going to be a mode where it clears all of your UI and you can take some really cool pictures of your agent or cool things that are happening whilst you're playing the Division 2. But yeah, there you have it guys, that's a few topics I wanted to bring to your attention from yesterday's special report. Thanks very much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to check out some more awesome stuff from us here at Arix Gaming, then you should definitely try to catch 269 and Paradise Central streaming 6 days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. They play a wide range of games, and what's more, we also have the end game store. By watching their streams, you earn currency, and you can redeem that currency on the end game store for really cool prizes. Those can range from things like games, comics, and figures, all the way up to controllers, capture cards, and even consoles. So definitely drop by and become part of the community. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you're subscribed and be sure to click on that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss our next upload. You can watch more videos by clicking on the options here. But once again, thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.